you seen Star Wars? <laughs> I always find it interesting how Star Wars can affect an actor's life normally, and, and I like George Lucas's mindset on casting for Star Wars, is normally go for actors who are not very well known. You look at the original trilogy, Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, Harrison Ford, they weren't the most known actors in the world at that time. Carrie Fisher was probably the most known due to her mother, and then you have Harrison Ford, who was mostly known because of American Graffiti at the time, but still, they were unknown actors. And the same thing happened with the prequels with Hayden Christensen, Natalie Portman, and then Ewan McGregor, who was the most known, but not that much in the States. Then we get to the sequel trilogy. You get John Boyega, Oscar Isaac, who was the most known, but then you get this actress, Daisy Ridley. And thankfully, she wasn't that well known because in Lucas's mind, in a proper mind in my opinion, is that when you see these actors or actresses in Star Wars, you want to see them as the character. You don't want to see them as the actual actor or actress. That's why it makes no sense to me why Star Wars fans want Keanu Reeves as Revan, because if I watch that movie, I see Keanu Reeves. I do not see Darth Revan. But besides the point, it's funny to see the aftermath of their career when Star Wars is over and Daisy Ridley has apparently having trouble getting jobs and getting uh, roles in movies and films after Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker concluded. Now if you recall after The Force Awakens she did a movie called um, Murder on the Oriental Express. I did not see that and then there was a Peter Rabbit I think. I also didn't see that but recently in an interview with Entertainment Weekly Daisy Ridley noted that after the break of completing the Star Wars sequels, it benefited her mental health, and she says this, When the film was released, I was like, oh my god, it was such a huge chapter, and weirdly, the past few months of not having much, obviously now it's really nice to be working, but not having much at the time, I feel like I processed the last five years. To be forced to slow down, it was good mentally for me, because Star Wars, a big thing in my life, but then she went on to kind of add that she was concerned on why there wasn't any new work coming for her at the beginning of the year, and she said, there were actually loads of things that I auditioned for at the beginning of the year, and didn't get any of them. I had that moment of, oh my god, and then just thought, everything in its right time. A, a lot of people kind of, uh, well come at Daisy and say this may be a reflection of her work in the sequels. Maybe she's not the greatest actress that we had in the sequel trilogy, which I could kind of understand. I would argue that someone like John Boyega, maybe even Oscar Isaac, may be uh, higher performing actors than Daisy is. I, I mean, I, I saw a movie with Oscar Isaac in it called A Life Itself a few weeks ago, and it was phenomenal. Very, very good movie, and he does a great job. Oscar Isaac is a phenomenal actor, and it is kind of nice to see that he stayed in the sequel trilogy after episode seven, even though he kind of ended up regretting it. But when it came to Daisy Ridley, after seeing her in The Force Awakens, I found her to be very charismatic. I found her to be a character that I couldn't relate to, but I actually did enjoy watching. But then when it came to The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker, it did seem, and this mostly is what I felt with The Rise of Skywalker, it did seem like she kind of checked out. Like, it didn't seem like she was very enthusiastic about playing the role of Rey anymore. And I could imagine why. I mean, it's a lot of stress being an actor, more or less in Star Wars, one of the biggest franchises of all time. And... Normally when you're done with these kind of movies, it's supposed to propel your career in a way that no other franchise could. I mean, you look at Mark Hamill, Harrison Ford, Carrie Fisher, their careers skyrocketed after Star Wars, mainly Harrison Ford. I mean, Harrison Ford did not want to be known as just Han Solo, so he became Indiana Jones. He played a lot of different roles. I saw a movie with him in uh, a month or two ago called Sabrina, which was like a 1994 film, and it was very different from his usual role, being that stubborn old man. And it was a very good, cute little film. But the point is, normally some of these actors and actresses try not to be defined by their Star Wars role. And unfortunately for Daisy, I feel like she's not going to be getting out of that uh, situation. I feel like Daisy may always be Rey, Palpatine, or Skywalker, wherever you want to call her. But I also feel like her performances in the last two films, Rise of Skywalker and The Last Jedi, may hinder her future career. And, I, and I'm not saying that as a criticism of her. I, I think she is a good actress. But I do think that there came a point when you were watching the films, at least after The Force Awakens, where you were like, well, maybe she could add a little bit more oomph into it, you know? I mean, during the filming of The Force Awakens, J.J. Abrams literally told Daisy Ridley, hey, your acting's a little wooden right now. And so kind of step it up a little bit. And I hope that's not something that is replicated throughout her career, because it is disappointing to hear that after 
Rise of Skywalker, she auditions for all these roles and she doesn't get it. And, and the question is, of course, why? Is it because she's too recognizable and, and people are going to see her as Rey Skywalker instead of Daisy Ridley in these new films? Or is it because maybe she's not the best actress compared to the pick that they're looking for? But then you look at her career compared to someone like Natalie Portman. Now, remember, both of these trilogies, the sequel trilogy and the prequel trilogy, have a fair amount of criticism towards it. And a lot of people, and I mean a lot of people, had a lot more criticism for Natalie Portman's portrayal of Padme Amidala in the prequel trilogy than they had for Daisy Ridley as Rey in the sequel trilogy. And that's a little fair because at the time when they were filming the prequel trilogy, it was during a time of CGI revolution stuff where, you know, Natalie Portman was an actress who was not used, and so was Liam Neeson and all the other people, but these actors were not used to having to talk to a CGI character that is not in front of them. You're, you're literally talking to a piece of paper and having to act it out, and there was a lot of complications to that. So when you look at the prequel trilogy, and we also have to remember George Lucas is not known as an actor's director. He doesn't really see actors as someone you can bring a lot of character and performance out of. He sees it as a mean to an end of a goal of getting the story told. And so when it came to the prequel trilogy, a lot of the acting in there was very wooden was very dry and it's just not great there's not a lot of great acting in the prequel trilogy and natalie portman has said openly her career literally almost went down the drain after the prequel trilogy and you can kind of see that with someone like jake lloyd and even though that was a was kind of a, a choice by him he didn't really want to continue to do film after the phantom menace but even hayden christensen you know i know a lot of the star wars fans proclaim him to be an amazing actor he, he's not and that's okay he doesn't have to be an amazing actor but he hasn't found a lot of roles after star wars and even the films that he has been in have been very very low media kind of indie style films and i wonder if we're going to see history repeat itself with daisy ridley i wonder if it's going to be one of those situations where even though she was the main lead for the Star Wars sequel films, she may not be a main lead for a lot more films in the future. And that doesn't mean that she's not going to have a career. She still has a, a crime thriller that's coming out called Ice Beneath Her from STX Entertainment. There's another film that she's in that I don't know when it'll come out. It's called Chaos Walking, and it was filmed in 2017. It wrapped up production in November 2017, but they had to do reshoots in April 2019 because they weren't able to do it sooner due to Ridley's commitment to Star Wars. So I, I'm curious on how her career is going to progress after this, and, and I hate to feel like a um, cynic towards her, but, but I really just did not find her performance in The Rise of Skywalker that captivizing, something where I looked at her and I was like, wow, she's a great actress. It did seem like she mentally checked out, and a lot of the acting she did was just like, I'm going to have my mouth open a little bit, breathe a little heavily, and then that's my role. And maybe... Maybe that shouldn't be a criticism on Daisy Ridley. Maybe that should be a criticism on someone like J.J. Uh, Abrams or, or Ryan Johnson. But I don't feel like they're bad directors when it comes to actors. I, I mean, if you look at Ryan Johnson's work with that recent film, Knives Out, or even his film before Star Wars, Looper, he got a lot of great performances out of tremendous actors. So maybe it's one of those things where the actor kind of has to add a little bit more to the Star Wars film in order to bring out better roles for the future. Liam Neeson almost quit acting after The Phantom Menace, but he still had a successful career that's still going to this day. So I think we see a trend with some of these actors that go into Star Wars, where like the next five years after their initial Star Wars films are done or, or start, they kind of have this moment of time where they have to kind of get out of that Star Wars phase. They have to redefine their career in a sense of going, yes, I was an actor who happened to have been in Star Wars, but my role and my life should not be defined by the character I played in Star Wars. And maybe Daisy Ridley is trying to find herself in doing that as well. I think she's been casted in this video game that's supposed to come out relatively soon. Uh, they say that things started picking up for her in late February and early March when she um, became the lead role of a woman in this Xbox and PC game called 12 Minutes. So there's that. So it looks like she is picking up work a little bit, but that's voice acting and, and probably not much actual acting since it's a video game. But I really wonder what her next big role is going to be. I really wonder what her next lead film is going to be, and if it's going to be a successful film. Because after Hayden Christensen wrapped up with the prequels, his next big film was, uh, I think, Jumper or something like that, which was just awful and has not really aged well. But then you have other actors like Oscar Isaac and John Boyega, 
and it's clear that their careers are still kind of going somewhere. I mean, John Boyega is still doing other films. He's still doing other shows. Oscar Isaac, I believe he's going to be in that next movie uh, called Dune. And I've never even read the book or seen the original movie, and I probably should. But he's still got this big career ahead of him. And it seems like those two have benefited from Star Wars a lot more than I think Daisy Ridley might. And like I said, this isn't me harping on Daisy and saying she's a bad actress. I'm just saying compared to her peers... She may not be what everyone else wants her to be in the acting realm and in the film production world. So I'm curious. I'm curious to see where her career goes, and I'm curious to see how Star Wars will impact that. Because right now it seems to be having the uh, reverse effect on her than what uh, a lot of fans for her would hope for. But tell me your thoughts below. Do you think Daisy Ridley is a great actress who is uh, having a little bit of a slump because of Star Wars? Or do you think maybe her performances in Star Wars have hindered her opportunities and possibilities for future roles in films and movies. Tell me your thoughts below on Star Wars Only. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe because it does help out the channel. I will see you all next time, and may the Force be with you always.